Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at the GPU Technology Conference in Silicon Valley, and today I'm here with Sumit Gupta from IBM. So, Sumit, did you have a good show so far? How's yeah, it going? Hey, Rich. Yeah, we did have a good show so far, and uh, actually things are going pretty well here. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I saw this slide you did about practical AI for the enterprise. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, I think what we're seeing is that obviously there's a huge amount of interest in enterprise customers, you know, large commercial c customers around how they can use AI, how they can use machine learning, deep learning. And uh, a lot of our focus at IBM is really enabling what we are calling the cognitive enterprise, right? Transforming, helping clients transform their industry, their, uh, their businesses mm -hmm. to become cognitive businesses. In other words, use AI in every aspect of how they run their business. Yeah, yeah. So what are the challenges there for that then? You know, I think if you if you start with uh, just the basic challenges, right, um, there's a, uh, just what, you know, first of all, there's a lot of clients who are saying, okay, what is AI? What is machine learning? What is deep learning? How does it apply to me, right? What are the use cases with clear business ROI, return on investment? that makes sense for me and the the i think you know if you look at perhaps even the media right or even perhaps speakers like me uh, what you end up hearing is ai is going to solve world hunger whereas most customers are thinking well i just want to do a small project to prove that ai actually brings benefit to my organization uh, so the first problem is clear use cases with clear business roi then the second challenge comes up okay now, how do I get started? What do I actually need to do to get started? And then I think the third concern, or I would say not really a challenge, but concern is, can I trust the AI model that I'm building? Mm -hmm. Trust for being accurate, trust that it's not invading people's privacy, right? So there is that aspect as well. Sure, sure. So we've gone from recognizing dogs and cats to solving world hunger, but what are you doing for practical AI for the enterprise with software. Sure, so I think if you look at all three of these things, right, I, we'll come to the use cases of problem number one maybe later, but problem number two, right, which is how do I get started? Um, there's a lot of open source software and available, and you know, people talk a lot about TensorFlow, but in reality, a lot of data scientists in the enterprise use a variety of software Right? They use Scikit-Learn, they use Anaconda, they, you know, Python is the foundation, they use TensorFlow Keras, a number of other things. They use Jupyter Notebooks to actually build their uh, models. What we've done is we've really created an enterprise software distribution of all of this software. And the, a lot of our focus is on helping multiple data scientists in a company collaborate. So the, we have products known as Watson Studio, Watson Machine Learning, and Watson OpenScale. Watson Studio is essentially Jupyter Notebooks and R Studio, but built for collaboration among multiple data scientists. So multiple uh, data scientists can be working on the same notebook. Uh, we allow them, we enable them to do data management. So you know, what is this data? Who created it? Who cleaned it? What is the, uh, you know, uh, where did this data come from? Right, so the history of the data. And then once you build those models, in Watson Machine Learning is the runtime. So that comes with all of TensorFlow, PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, all of that stuff. And that's where you can actually uh, manage your models. You can do model governance, which means that you know, you're not only checking the versions of the models, but you are also making sure that you know, if Rich builds a model, it's highly trustable. But if Sumit builds a model, well, you know, he's not, he, it, there may be some accuracy issues. So, so you can do a lot of those kind of things where you're actually managing and maintaining the models. And uh, you know, we have a product that adds on to Watson Machine Learning called Watson Machine Learning WML Accelerator. And that product is really designed for multiple data scientists to use the same hardware resources. So this sounds like a trivial problem, but it turns out that just like in high performance computing, a lot of clients use, for example, the IBM Spectrum LSF product. In finance, a lot of products use the uh, Spectrum Symphony product. And these products are designed for scheduling jobs on your cluster with GPUs, with just CPUs, or 
it's used also for uh, managing multiple data scientists just launching jobs into them. Yeah. So we built this product called Watson Machine Learning Accelerator, which is a resource scheduler, a job scheduler, and a, a enables multiple data scientists to seamlessly use one resource. It's based on Spark, which is under the hood. You know, Apache Spark's under the hood, and based on another product called Spectrum Conductor from us, which is also under the hood. Okay. Well, I still think of IBM uh, Smith as a hardware company. What's going on there with AI? Well, no, you know, I, so IBM is actually, a, uh, I mean, we do software, we do hardware, we do services, we do cloud. Um, so we, um, we're making a very big investment in software because I would say that that's what data scientists see first. Yeah. Right, the software experience, the software environment. Uh, how do they use TensorFlow? Right, uh, the the pain points of being a, you know getting this software as a distribution is important. Yeah. Right, it it sounds trivial again, but you don't go to Linux.org to get Linux. You go to Red Hat, as your hat in, indicates, yeah. right? Yeah. Or you go to SUSE. But the point is that you go get a professional distribution. In the same way, we are providing that distribution for all of this open source software. Now what we do with this open source software is we enhance it. We enhance it, for example, we enhance TensorFlow to manage larger models. And the way we do that, or the, the reason we can do that, is because of the unique hardware that we have. So we've partnered with NVIDIA for many years, and we've embedded in the power CPU, in the silicon, the high-speed NVLink interface. So the CPU and GPU can communicate with each other five times faster than Intel or x86-based servers, because PCIe is a bottleneck in Intel servers. And because of NVLink, we can do, for example, large model support, where you keep an extremely large data set and large model in the system memory connected to the CPU, and you transfer it bit by bit to the GPU. And that, so you know, my point is that we take all those hardware advantages and manifest them into the software. So from a user or data scientist perspective, it's just seamless how they, they can now use larger models, whereas they can't do that on Intel-based platforms. Well, I mean, this is exciting to see you guys continue this relationship with NVIDIA. And now we've seen, you know, um, interconnects come in. You know, moving data, it's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, see, I think the big paradigm shift that happened, which we've been talking about for a long time, is that Moore's Law is, you know, whether you want to call it dead, slow, or, or gone, right? And the world is clearly moving to an accelerated computing model. Now, IBM banked on that like seven, eight years ago when we started Open Power Foundation. We partnered with NVIDIA, Xilinx, you know, the whole community saying that it would be about accelerate compute, accelerate storage, accelerate networking. And then the minute you think like that, then the number one thing that becomes evident is all the data is sitting on the CPU memory or the system memory. How do you get it to all these other accelerators? So now you need to have interconnects. That's why we partnered with NVIDIA on NVLink. Mm -hmm. We partnered with Xilinx, Mellanox, and others on OpenCAPI, yeah. right? Which is an open interface, very high speed, that enables connection to any other accelerator or networker, right? Now, doing the hardware is not enough. Once you have this paradigm shift where you have accelerated computing, you now have to take advantage of this in the software. So I talked about large model support in TensorFlow. The other big thing we've been doing is around machine learning. So you know, if you hear what NVIDIA is working on, they're working on this library called Rapids. We've been working on a different orthogonal complementary library called SnapML. Right? SnapML is a high performance machine learning library designed to really, I, I will say, compete uh, with scikit-learn, right? What we're trying to do is, scikit-learn is the de facto machine learning library that many people use. It's 50%, uh, surveys show that 50% of all data scientists use scikit-learn. Um, but scikit-learn was really not designed for high performance, right? SnapML is designed from the ground up for high performance. So we do, number one, multi-core CPU, multi-threaded multi-core CPU, we take advantage of that. Sounds obvious. It hasn't been done. Uh, then we take advantage of GPUs wherever possible. So for example, we've accelerated all the linear models 
logistic regression, linear regression, lasso, ridge, so on, support, uh, support vector machines with GPUs. We've accelerated random forest and decision trees with multi-core CPUs. And we distribute it across multiple GPUs, multiple servers, so we can also scale it out. Right? So again, the point being that the reason we can accelerate machine learning and you can't do that on Intel is because of the NVLink connection. Because machine learning tasks are often small. And you, know, you want to transfer the data over to the GPU, you lose all the benefit if you use PCIe. So that's, that's where NVLink brings value again. Well, great. Well, Smith, I want to thank you for bringing us up to speed yeah. on AI here at the GPU conference, and I hope you have a great show. Great, thank you, Rich, and it's good talking to you again. You bet, you bet. Yep.